Welcome to the Council of the European Union, also known as the Council of Ministers or simply as the Council. And definitely not to be confused with the European Council or the Council of Europe. Confused yet? Well, so is everybody else. The Council functions as the representation of the governments of the member states and consists of 28 ministers, one from each member state. As each country has multiple ministers, each with its own portfolio, the Council, while officially a single entity, meets in 10 different compositions, depending on the subject being discussed. For example, all national ministers responsible for agriculture and fishery policy come together in the EU's Agriculture and Fishery Council. And here we have an EU complication. As some council configurations encompass the portfolio of multiple national ministers, in case of some EU council configurations, some member states send more than one minister. Each of these councils is chaired by the minister whose country holds the rotating council presidency. But the EU wouldn't be itself if there wasn't an exception. When discussing foreign affairs, the council is always chaired by the high representative of the EU. The council makes decisions by qualified majority, which means that to make a decision, it must be supported by the ministers of 55% of the countries, representing at least 65% of the EU's population. But this qualified majority can force its will on a protesting minority. Four countries, representing at least 35% of the population, can block a decision by voting against it. And we have another exception. When making decisions on one of these subjects, Qualified majority is not enough, but instead unanimity is needed. Why? Because these are subjects that lie at the heart of state sovereignty and member states prefer to keep these matters on an intergovernmental level, rather than handing these powers over to the EU. In practice, however, the Council tries to reach unanimity not only on these subjects, but also on subjects that only require qualified majority. As a result, there tend to be very few votes against or abstentions. So if your national minister says Brussels to sign it, remember they were there and they had a vote. Due to the sharing of the legislative and budgetary powers with Parliament, the decision only passes when Parliament also signs off on it, except in the case of the subjects mentioned before, where the Council must decide with unanimity. In those cases, Parliament's approval is not needed. In all this, the ministers who sit in the Council are supported by the General Secretariat and the Committee of Permanent Representatives. The General Secretariat functions as a general supporting staff, preparing meetings, drafting reports, agendas and so on. They are civil servants of the EU and do not represent an individual member state. Corepair, in contrast, is composed of representatives from the states themselves, such as ambassadors and national civil servants. They prepare the work of the ministers taking seat in the Council and when the Council shares power with Parliament, Corepair works with them. So what is it the Council really does with the support of Corepair and the General Secretariat? There are a few main tasks the Council is responsible for. All proposals for new EU law must be checked by the Council. The Council may then choose to approve, amend or reject it. As such, the Council can stop almost every new law from being implemented. Like new legislation, the EU budget must be approved by the Council before money can be spent. While this power is shared with Parliament, they don't really share it fairly. If the Council and Parliament can seem to agree, Parliament can cast a deciding vote, effectively disregarding the Council's opinion. Besides its normal legal instruments, the Council also decides on the EU's Common Foreign and Security Policy, or CFSP, which the High Representative then carries out. The Council decides on the leading principles and guidelines for the CFSP as well as on common strategies that the EU will follow. Based on these leading principles and guidelines, the Council then adopts joint actions aimed at specific situations where the EU actions are deemed necessary and it adopts common positions which cover more general geographical and thematical areas and form general guidelines that the Member States must conform to. The Council consists of usually 28, but sometimes more, national ministers, each working for and representing their own country. Depending on the topic discussed, the ministers making up the Council change. The ministers are supported both by EU and national civil servants. Just like Parliament, the Council votes on new laws as well as the EU budget. To find out more about the other institutions, the history of the EU and other subjects, please check out our playlists and subscribe to our channel.